Hi everyone, welcome to our after school special interview series. It's our last interview today with Andre. Hi, how are you doing? I am, I'm alive, I'm good. How are you? Doing good. Andre was just featured in a lens scratch interview, um, which you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link on the video. I thought that was really exciting, so congratulations on that too. Thank you, I'm super excited about it, honestly. So I appreciate that. <laughs> Um, okay, we'll go ahead and jump in. Um, okay, so my first question is, your work deals with a lot of issues, which are personal to you, but also happen to be getting a lot of global attention right now. What conversations do you hope your work can spark for your viewers? Um, hmm. The conversations that I really like to, um, that I really want to spark within viewers, I think it's kind of dependent on the audience and who they are. And so particularly for black audience, for example, I want them to look at the work and um, know that they, I am trying to really highlight aspects of black community, black culture, black history that have been absolutely like, you know, hidden, shrouded and just swept aside. I want black people specifically to know that they are important because history has gone out of its way to tell us that we are not. So the conversation that I want to have specifically, I'm thinking about the black audience, is that, yo, like this, we are important. We need to start recognizing ourselves as, well, community needs to start recognizing black community as equal and nothing, and nothing less, nothing less at all. Um, but also the conversation as a whole is why are we not considered equal? What is going on within our like American culture, American community, or global community and society that is making the black body so lesser than um, dot dot dot? You know, and the conversation that, that these conversations about black identity from a black perspective and outside of a black perspective um, are so prevalent, especially now, right? Like you said. I mean, now more than ever, people are starting to recognize racial injustice and systemic racism. And those conversations, those long arm overdue conversations are things that I really hope that my, uh, that my work can spark. Mm -hmm. And I think, I don't know, for me, that felt like a really important thing to bring up because in my mind, I think that, you know, no matter who you are or where you come from, there's always an opportunity to learn more. Absolutely. and to grow um, positively. Um, you know, I, I kind of talked with you a little bit er the other day about how um, it was really meaningful for me when I was in school learning about my own culture. Um, and it's like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if, you, if it's a different culture from you or your own culture. There's, there's so much room to learn more and to um, get a better grasp and just understand things better. Definitely. Yeah, there is a, I mean, in that conversation that we are, we're having, we recognize, especially in academia, that a lot of the people that teach us things about everything are not from, you know, the same skin color that we have or the complexion that we have. They're taught from a very colonial lens. Um, even the things like, you know, Africana studies or uh, Chicano studies are sometimes whitewashed, and that is a problem. We all have to recognize that one way isn't the only way and what i mean is history is taught to us in a very specific way and we have to question those sort of things um yeah it's really it's really i think detrimental to um a diverse culture of people uh that things are being taught from only one lens we have to teach ourselves not only about our own cultural history like i teach myself about black history because it wasn't taught to me in academia I'm also teaching myself about the land that we live on that was colonized because it's also taught to us from a colonized lens, right? Yeah. Um, the indigenous body is so important and that's something like, yeah, I'm, I'm going off on a tangent, but yeah. yeah, we recognize our privileges, recognize our differences so that we can come past those differences. You, um, Especially in the age of the internet when we literally have all of the information at our fingertips, like there's just no use anymore. Um, yeah. In my opinion, you don't have to be in college. Um, and there's so many free resources for people to use. And it's, yeah. like, it's all there. It's waiting for us. I've got a lot of free PDFs that I could have paid for. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, like, the library, honestly, like, 
the library was my like comfort blanket <laughs> growing yeah. up because I mean it's always free it's always there for you um you know no matter what you're into or whatever absolutely <laughs> I mean we, we we transferred a lot into a digital age and I mean I'm a digital photographer who uses digital manipulation in my work I recognize how um prevalent and how beneficial digi digital media and all this sort of digital communication can really work but to knock you know knock history to knock reading things um to, to knock primary sources for example like that's something that we cannot if we can't we can't let ourselves fall into that trap yeah okay so second question how have recent events fueled you creatively do you fear yourself picking up momentum or changing gears in any way um a little bit of both um i, I think i'll start with the picking up of momentum mm -hmm. um, the with the escalation of the not escalation of pr police brutality but the escalation of recognition of police brutality in this country absolutely lit a fire on. I went from, you know, recognizing racial injustice to wanting to fight racial injustice. And that is something that I think is so, uh, we, we uh, more than just black people need to be recognizing these, like these racism, these problems, these cultural and global differences and, and, and need to be willing to rise up and do something about it. And I'm, I'm creatively trying to use my practice in more than just a, a way of exploring these sort of things. I love to use art to cope with my own personal thoughts, uh, to cope with national and global issues, and to explore these issues as well. But I'm starting to use my creative practice as a means to fight the system. Um, I mean, to ignore the fact that visual language is relevant in so many ways in culture is, is just blasphemous. People think that art is, you know, art is on the back burner, but I, I, I can tell you that I have been using my art as a form of propaganda even. And what, what I mean is to really highlight specific things uh, to people that otherwise would not be knowing these sort of things. I mean, it's, it's really fueled how I go about creating and how I go about approaching an audience with the work that I make. Um, and it, I also have shifted gears. I went from making work that was more tailored towards my personal experience um, and kind of also about my mental health. And the work that I that in uh, the show is also d like divvying within and weaving within mental health. But more now than ever, it's absolutely about like black justice and black power. Um, I I, I kind of had to put myself on the back burner and put black community a little bit to the forefront. I mean, I'm part of that community as well, but my work changed in the sense I was like, okay, this is, this is necessary. I have to make this change, not just for the fact that I need to make this work, but the world and the nation and me and the people around me and the community, dot, 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 need this work. It's so relevant. Um, so yeah, the, the issues that have, that have, I guess persisted are only perpetuating my my passion to really make a change in the way that I can. I really feel that from this new series, just thinking about like the series that you did for your senior thesis, which is only a few years ago. Um, I still very much feel you and your work, but I think what's really exciting for me is to see the progress that you made just in kind of changing up your style a little bit. Like, honestly, I'm not often a fan of contemporary work. I think it can be really pretentious a lot of the time. But what you're saying and the way that you're doing it is so subtle uh, visually, but it's literally like speaking volumes about um, what's going on in the Black community right now, what's going on for us as a nation, what's going on for us as a people globally. Like, it's just blowing my mind. And I think that's like why I just like got so excited. <laughs> um, because I, I don't know, I can just see you only going like up and up and up from here. But I, I really feel like you pulled that off because like even me who doesn't like come from the black community, I like, I see it, I see what you're trying to do and I'm just like so excited for you and I'm excited about it. Thank you, I appreciate that. And that kind of support is so 
I, I mean, I love that support from friends. You are my friend. And I also love that support from community that we need to be supporting each other in that sort of way, right? Like yeah. the reality is people, when people ask me, you know, why black people? Um, or I hear things in the media are like, you know, why black people? Everyone's important. Um, that kind of um, ridicule of, of black justice is absolutely the opposite of what we need as far as revolution and change. Um, we only need, we only need support and community. We have been brought up in a country that is supposedly, at least brought like in front of my eyes, supports like, you know, this melting pot, this inclusivity. And whenever that stuff is unveiled to not be that, it makes us, it makes me, it makes American citizens mad. Okay, so my next question kind of leads into what we've kind of already been talking about a little bit. Um, but it's, uh, I was, again, bringing up your senior thesis, it was a series of portraits. And this latest work is a series of portraits in an abstract sense. Um, is there anything or anyone in particular that drew you to this style that you're kind of on right now? Yeah, um, there's a couple of artists in mind, actually. Um, specifically da David Leggett, he is a contemporary like painter slash drawer uh, mm -hmm. that specifically with uh, kind of like black identity in his work and also appropriates imagery from pop culture. Like you'll see Bart Simpson, but like black Bart Simpson in there. You'll see cartoon donuts or you'll see members of the cast from Fat Albert. So these really, um, I, really relatable subject matter is what I also am drawn to. Um, the, extract, the abstraction of portraiture in the sense that I'm still talking about people or a person, but using appropriated imagery or symbols to talk about those people. That's what David Leggett does, and I think he does it in a very communicative way. Um, a little bit of a divvy, but to talk about what you were talking about earlier, contemporary art can be really pretentious. I really kind of denounce the, the idea that art can, should only be accessible by people that have an art degree. That's really dumb. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> I want my work, I mean, I also reach out to things that I like. I mean, they're from my family archive. They're riddled from like pop culture and hip hop culture. They're also riddled from like menstrual cartoons and, and, and relevant good cartoons. So I, I use a lot of these overlapping themes to really talk about portraiture, to talk about people the same way David Leggett does. I also think about um, Nona Faustine Simmons who doesn't use collage, but she uses her black body and puts it on the forefront mm -hmm. to really talk about how the black, how black injustice and how systemic racism and the history that's pitted against black people have really impacted her life. The same with D'Angelo Lavelle Williams. I, I, I really am looking towards black artists and black photographers uh, to give me a sense of, I don't know, I, I, I feel like that gives me a sense of not just um, like motivation, but I have a relationship with their work because I, I can kind of empathize and understand where they're coming from. Um, so my last kind of question is, how do you think your journey of self-exploration has progressed and matured since you started grad school? Um, that's a good one. Um, so for those that don't know, I graduated from Lamar in 2017. So that was only three years ago. Um, and I really jumped right into grad school. Grad school was a huge change. In undergrad, it was like, okay, turning this project in a week, turning this project in two months. And grad school is like, okay, in three years, you're going to have something to show for this. And so that sort of freedom and, and that sort of vast freedom was both really liberating and also incredibly intimidating. Um, and so I just started exploring. I just started really doing a lot of things that I never I wouldn't say have the opportunity to do in undergrad, but you know I was focusing on building a practice, so I could I I I couldn't really. Um, but in grad school, this amount of freedom. Also, I'm at University of New Mexico, which in comparison to like the School of Visual Arts in New York, is a heavily research-based facility. So I have not only gotten a lot of opportunity to expand my practice as far as experimenting with different mediums, I also have had a lot of time to really research and devote time. Like going into my studio isn't, isn't just making work, it's going into my studio to read and research. 
Um, and so the, the experience I've had at the University of New Mexico has been really, um, I think really pivotal in how I have started approaching work. Um, it's got, it's let me explore different mediums. It's let me explore history and in in, in an art, art history and history in a way that I never thought before. And it's also let me really just dive into my own psyche in ways that I couldn't in undergrad. So yeah, I think, I think I, I'm, a, I, I, if I wasn't, I mean, I, if I wasn't at the University of New Mexico, I would be a different photographer or an artist. But if I wasn't at, in grad school, with the amount of freedom that I have, I don't know what I'd be doing. I, I'm, I'm really gracious of this opportunity. And I love the fact that you talk about the importance of research, because I feel like a lot of the times, even people coming, you know, let's say you just go to a museum, um, totally not even from an art background. And I feel like a lot of the times uh, people can miss an opportunity to really learn something because they're faced with an image without the context. Um, and my favorite kind of work is when I see something that's drawing on something from history or, you know, that's giving, that's, you know, um, kind of giving me a play on some sort of information. Um, so I, I think it's, I don't know, I think it's really important that you mentioned the fact that, um, you know, a big part of helping you grow was having the opportunity to do all of this extra research and everything. Um, and I think that, again, that really shows in this series that you've been working on um, and that you've um, shown us as a part of this uh, exhibition. But I, I have expanded, I mean, I say research, it took me a while to kind of even like adapt, like grasp that term. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. There was something that would the the arts in comparison to like STEM majors, for example, you know, engineering majors, research is looked at differently. Whenever I enter a scholarship for research, I don't have I gotta have to kind of conform to the vocabulary of what research is, right? Yeah. But research to me is I'd be on juxtapose, I'd be I'd be picking up a juxtapose magazine and looking through the artists and reading about those artists. Or maybe I am reading uh, art theory, or maybe I'm reading political theory. Or maybe I'm like, there's a lot of things that I am researching that's really added to my practice. Yeah, and I guess that's what I was like, I think that's what I was trying to express is that I feel like a lot of the times people look at art as something that's just surface level and it's extra and it, we don't really need it. I mean, it's always the first thing to get cut when it comes to what we can afford um, for public education or just education period. And the, the fact that you're drawing on all of these other things to help you in your creative process just goes to show how important it is to everyone culturally, especially during times like this when we're going through a cultural revolution of sorts. I mean, everything that we make during this time, and this is kind of something that I brought up with everyone during this series, everything that we make during this time is gonna be so unique and it's gonna be so special because when have we had this amount of technology? When have we been faced with this many issues all at the same time? And it's like, if you go back in the history books and take a look, like every time that we've been faced with multiple issues at the same time has resulted in great change. And it's, and it's all a matter of where we take it from here and basically what kind of things are we gonna be representing um, as a society, um, you know, culturally, uh, not culturally, creatively as artists, or, you know, what are people going to be writing? What kind of movies are people going to be making? Mm -hmm. You know, not mm -hmm. even that, but like, what kind of politicians are going to blossom from this time, you know? Yeah, what will uh, change? It's just, it's, even though it's been extremely stressful, um, and <laughs> I think a lot of people are struggling right now, um, I'm still excited because I feel like, I don't know, I feel like only good things can come from this because I feel like a lot of people are starting to learn from their mistakes, hopefully, and if not, then they're about to be forced to. Yes. Um, so no matter what, things are going to change, and 
I'm thinking that they're going to change for the better because, I mean, let's be honest, it feels like we're a little bit at rock bottom. The only way to go from bottom is up. So, well, I was going to say, if you have anything extra that you want to say or, like, anything else that you want to say about the series, like, feel free to to do that. Okay, yeah. I um, Two things. One thing that's about the series. Um, I'd, I'd like to talk about the kind of the different aspects that really brought me to the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is important. It is absolutely about black lives. The beginning of the series started for me researching police brutality and being incredibly overwhelmed. Um, it was the first time that I was doing research for my practice that I had to absolutely step away because my mental health was really deteriorating from all that sort of visceral, violent oppression. Um, you know, it was it was tough, but at the same time, I refuse. I refuse to be complacent. I refuse to be complacent in this. And I think that's something that's really important. Um, I refuse to be complacent in these negative stigmas towards black people. I refuse to be compla- complacent in the negative stigma that revolves around depression and mental health. All of these things that, th- those are the main two parts of that work. They are black, like, let's be real, black, black power is more important than anything I'm, I'm talking about right now. But also that the work is also I would be lying if I if I said it was only about that. It's absolutely about how important mental health is, um, especially being a black male that's stigmatized to be this tough machismo, maybe even thug. You know, I'm not supposed to have depressed and to be depressed. And so there's a lot of relevant things that I refuse to be complacent in this in this work about that I really want to scream from the rooftops, but I'm using my art to do it instead. Um, and I guess I the second the form I, of screaming definitely. <laughs> I, I really do love that. Um, and the second part is really about complacency in general. I, I, I think that that is such a thing that it's easy to fall into. Um, I love how, like, I'm already seeing changes, right? People are recognizing that there is a incredibly, like, how to, there's, a, there's a disconnect with the amount of black people in this country and the black representation. People are finally starting to realize that. And I feel like from in that way, I mean, documentary and all these things I'm talking about are included within the arts. We are improving. Um, but we just can't fall into complacency. Um, we can't fall into Philistine ideas of yes and no. We have to keep going. People yeah. have to keep going. And I think... Like, everything that you're saying, I think, again, comes back to this specific time. Because, I mean, if we take a look at a similar era of what we're going through back in the 60s, -hmm. television is now in every single home. We're getting media footage of race riots. We're getting media footage of police brutality for the first time. We're getting media footage of the Vietnam War. We're getting it all and we're seeing it for the first time. And now everyone has one of those in their pocket. Everyone yeah. has one of those little cameras and we're seeing it at a microscopic level. And I think that, you know, um, because of, ugh, I mean, the news, I feel like I used to be able to trust the media to be kind of like a Switzerland and just give us the information and let us interpret it on our own. And I feel like, especially over the last 10 to 15-ish years, it's gone downhill. But Mm -hmm. the fact that everyone does have one of these cameras in their pocket now, we're getting all of these, um, you know, a lot of people who have become complacent are being faced with very brutal things um, that people are now able to put out on the internet for everyone to see. And it's hard to see, and I'll be honest, a lot of the times I don't actually look at it, but I understand what's happening, and it does make me upset, and it does make me want to do more. And I feel like we're having that kind of media revolution again, um, where people are kind of like waking up from their slumber that they were in and realizing Mm -hmm. that like, hey, like, this is happening, this is happening whether you want to look at it or not but you know if you're just going to sit by the sidelines like you're just going to get left behind and you're not going to have any place in our future so i love 
I mean, we're I'm an artist. We, yeah. You, you're we as people who appreciate art, and not even as people appreciate art as people as gen, as human beings. Why I I feel like there is a upheaval for a sort of how do I describe it a a highlight of marginalized communities and under underrepresentation, like with the up with the uprising of things like Steven Universe and OK Go and you know queer representation in like kids cartoons and stuff like this. It's it just great makes to see. Me, makes me happy. Wasn't... Makes me happy because things are only going to be better for the generations to come. Yeah, it honestly like would bring tears to my eyes of hope in that way. Like yeah. the fact that the generation, the next generation will not have to go through the things that we're going through yeah. makes me because of the, even the, the experiences that, that I've even dealt with. But you know, I remember growing up and being out, but also when a stranger asked me if I was out, I'd be like, nope, you know? Um, and and yeah. those things, I think, changing for the generation next, which is beautiful. Yeah. Well, so. I'll let you go. All right, girl. Bye. Bye.